Section 1.3 Kirchhoff's Principle Only the Key is Kept Secret To design a cryptographic algorithm, like our encryption primitive, is an easy task. But to design a secure cryptographic algorithm is not for the faint of heart. While we shy away from creating such algorithms in this book, we do learn how to recognize the good ones. This can be difficult, as there is more choice than one can ask for the task. Hints can be found in the repeated failures of the history of cryptography, as well as the lessons that the community has learned from them. As we take a look at the past, we will grasp at what turns a cryptographic algorithm into a trusted-to-be-secure one. Hundreds of years have passed and many queens and lords have been buried. Since then, paper has been abandoned as our primary means of communication in favor of better and more practical technologies. Today, we have access to powerful computers as well as the Internet. More practical, sure, but this also means our previous malicious messenger has become much more powerful. He is now everywhere. The Wi-Fi in the Starbucks cafe you're sitting in the different servers making up the Internet and forwarding your messages, and even in the machines running our algorithms. Our enemies are now able to observe many more messages as each request you make to a website might pass through the wrong wire and become altered or copied in a matter of nanoseconds without anyone noticing. Before us, we can see that recent history contains many instances of encryption algorithms falling apart, being broken by secret state organizations or by independent researchers, and failing to protect their messages or accomplish their claims. Many lessons were learned, and we slowly came to understand how to produce good cryptography. Note. A cryptographic algorithm can be considered broken in many ways. For an encryption algorithm, you can imagine several ways to attack the algorithm. The secret key can be leaked to the attacker. Messages can be decrypted without the help of the key. Some information about the message can be revealed just by looking at the encrypted message, and so on. Anything that would somehow weaken the assumptions we made about the algorithm could be considered a break. A strong notion came out of the long process of trial and error that cryptography went through. To obtain confidence in the security claims made by a cryptographic primitive, the primitive has to be analyzed in the open by experts. Short of that, you are relying on security through obscurity, which hasn't worked well historically. This is why cryptographers, the people who build, usually use the help of cryptanalysts, the people who break, in order to analyze the security of a construction, although cryptographers are often cryptanalysts themselves, and vice versa. Let's take the Advanced Encryption Standard, or AES, encryption algorithm as an example. AES was the product of an international competition organized by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. Note, NIST is a United States agency whose role is to define standards and develop guidelines for use in government-related functions, as well as other public or private organizations. Like AES, it has standardized many widely used cryptographic primitives. The AES competition lasted several years, during which many volunteering cryptanalysts from around the world gathered to take a chance at breaking the various candidate constructions. After several years, once enough confidence was built by the process, a single competing encryption algorithm was nominated to become the advanced encryption standard itself. Nowadays, most people trust that AES to be a solid encryption algorithm, and it is widely used to encrypt almost anything. For example, you use it every day when you browse the web. The idea to build cryptographic standards in the open is related to a concept often referred to as Kirchhoff's principle, which can be understood as something like this. It would be foolish to rely on our enemies not to discover what algorithms we use because they most likely will. Instead, let's be open about them. If the enemies of Queen Alice and Lord Bob knew exactly how they were encrypting messages, 
How is their encryption algorithm secure? The answer is the secret key. The secrecy of the key makes the protocol secure, not the secrecy of the algorithm itself. This is a common theme in this book. All the cryptographic algorithms that we will learn about and that are used in the real world are most often free to be studied and used. Only the secret key used as input to these algorithms are kept secret. Ars Ipsi Secreta Magistro, or an art secret even for the master, said Jean-Robert du Carlet in 1644. In the next section, I will talk about a totally different kind of cryptographic primitive. For now, let's use figure 1.4 to organize what we've learned so far. Section 1.4. Asymmetric Cryptography. Two keys are better than one. In our discussion about symmetric encryption, we said that Queen Alice and Lord Bob first met to decide on a symmetric key. This is a plausible scenario, and a lot of protocols actually do work like this. Nonetheless, this quickly becomes less practical in protocols with many participants. Do we need our web browser to meet with Google, Facebook, Amazon, and the other billions of websites before securely connecting to those? This problem, often referred to as key distribution, has been a hard one to solve for quite a long time at least until the discovery in the late 1970s of another large and useful category of cryptographic algorithms called asymmetric cryptography, or public key cryptography. Asymmetric cryptography generally makes use of different keys for different functions, as opposed to a single key used in symmetric cryptography, or provides different points of view to different participants. To illustrate what this means and how public key cryptography helps to set up trust between people, I'll introduce a number of asymmetric primitives in this section. Note that this is only a glance of what you'll learn in this book, as I'll talk about each of these cryptographic primitives in more detail in subsequent chapters.